Would you pray with me, please? Be with us this morning, God. Quiet our hearts. May our spirits be still, that we might hear from you. Amen. Were not ten made clean? Jesus asked as only one of those whom he just healed turned back to thank him. Were not ten made clean? Well, yes, ten were. But alas, only this one, this Samaritan, took time to honor and to give thanks for what Jesus had just done. These other nine, well, they just went right on their merry way. We're not ten made clean. This passage from Luke chapter 17 came to me the other night as our family was driving home from Juliana's soccer game. The weather that evening was warm and clear. We had the windows down and everyone was in good spirits. We were simply driving on our way home when suddenly from his car seat behind us, Bennett exclaimed, Look, Daddy DeMoon! Well, I looked and sure enough, there was the moon. Beautiful, glowing, a sliver of silver just off to the right of our vehicle, just hanging there in the night sky. The moon, he exclaimed again. Look, Daddy, it's the moon. Well, here's why he said that. You see, though I had forgotten about it, while we were driving home from something else weeks earlier, I'd pointed out the moon to him, and I'd told him how big and how amazing the moon really is, and I'd said to him, isn't it beautiful, buddy? Isn't it, isn't it just amazing? Well, he'd clearly remembered that. And so on this clear night, seeing such a visible and demonstrable moon, he was excited now to share this enthusiasm with me once more. See, Daddy, it's the moon. It was a cute moment. It was a cute moment. So then God looked upon all that God had created and God saw that it was very good. That's what Genesis chapter 1 says, summing up the creation narrative, that God deemed it very good. We often forget this, I think. This being that despite how bent and broken creation has become by the interloping realities of sin and evil, that still this is a world that God deemed very good, which is to say that there is still so much beauty, so much bounty, so much richness and sustenance. In fact, so abundant is it all that we are given to taking it all for granted. See, Daddy, he exclaimed, it's the moon. Well, indeed, buddy, that is the moon. And you're right, it is magnificent. Just magnificent. Here's why I say that this experience with Bennett and the moon made me think of this passage from Luke 17 and the ten lepers. All ten of the lepers were healed that day, the passage tells us. Just as all six of us in the car that night were moving underneath that same gorgeous moon, all of us saw it, all of us were graced by it, all of us had our experience enhanced by our encounter with and our proximity to it, yet only Bennett, yet only the most childlike among us had the presence of mind to stop and be grateful for it. Only Bennett, our two-year-old, had the eyes that night to see. The rest of us, we simply took it for granted. As if beauty like this is our birthright. 
As if the wonders of this very good creation abound for no other purpose than to serve as window dressing and as background for our own individual journeys. We're not ten made clean, Jesus asked the one who turned back. Yes, ten were made clean, but only one came back to thank him and give honor to him for it. Well, we're not all six blessed by that beauty that night, I found myself thinking suddenly, yes. Yes, six were. Yet only one of us stopped to honor it and express our gratitude for it. Here's something I want us to notice about this passage in Luke 17. After the Samaritan comes back to give thanks to Jesus for his healing, Jesus only then says, Your faith has made you well. Only then. See, because the miracle in this passage is one of physical healing, we tend to read these words made well in this context to be in reference to the Samaritan's physical rehabilitation. But again, if you look closely, the Samaritan leper has already been physically rehabilitated at this point. Just as all nine of the others who did not stop to give thanks have likewise already been physically rehabilitated rehabilitated at this point. So in this passage, physical rehabilitation and made well are not entirely synonymous. No, instead, what Jesus is saying here to the one who stopped to express his thanks is that beyond the fact of his miraculous healing, which has made him physically rehabilitated, Beyond that, his gratitude for the healing has made him well. That is, has given him a far wider and far richer appreciation for what has just taken place than with the other nine. For think about it. It's not as if Jesus, due to the lack of gratitude shown by the other nine, suddenly decided to rescind their healing... No, the other nine in the passage remained every bit as healed of leprosy as the one who stopped to give Jesus thanks. But what they lacked, and what the Samaritan gained, was a robust appreciation for the goodness of the gift, and for the goodness of the giver, and for the goodness of life itself. In short, the Samaritan's gratitude amplified his awareness. And his amplified awareness is the thing that made him well. Not just rehabilitated, but well. I want us to think about this creatively. Let's do a little thought experiment. I want us to imagine that we know more than we really do about these other nine lepers. Surely we imagine that they had more in their lives that troubled and anguished and beset them than just their skin disease, right? Beyond the profound social ostracism that leprosy led to in the Jewish community, beyond that, surely these lepers had other things that were burdening them and weighing them down too, right? Have to. Let's say that one of them had a sister who was sick and dying. Let's say that another of them had a family who'd forsaken him upon his development of this disease. Let's say that another of them was woefully behind on paying her rent. Let's say that another of them was exhausted by the daily demands of his fishing or his tailoring career. Let's say that. Now, given these hypothetical stresses... Surely we imagine that despite how significant being healed of leprosy no doubt was, still not all of these lepers' burdens and anguishes had suddenly just gone away. No, they would have remained every bit as prone to anguish and stress and overwhelm about these other things as they had been just moments before. They had been physically healed, yes, 
But that does not mean that they had been made well. The Samaritan, on the other hand, no doubt had his own stresses and fears and anguishes beyond his leprosy too. Nonetheless, his gratitude, his humility, his thankful wonder, his amplified awareness, all of this made him more appreciative of the goodness of creation that surrounded it all, rendering him at least momentarily well. Leading out to the point of this sermon. Amplified awareness of the goodness of creation, which is to say heightened recognition of the love of God, of the animating principle that surrounds and sustains every element and moment of the universe. Amplified awareness of this hyperabundance does not suddenly, magically make all other troubles and concerns just melt away. But it does situate these things within a larger reality and embeds them within a larger, more transformational story. When we are oriented toward the world with a posture of humble gratitude, when we approach the world with a disposition open to and even expectant of wonder, then we are more apt to recognize our place within the vast order of things. To recognize our situatedness in this exquisite theater and in this grand drama that Creator God deemed very good in the very beginning. And while locating ourselves in such a way does not make our fears and our griefs and our anxieties magically abate, it does empower us to taste and to see the goodness of the now. Case in point, as we drove home from Juliana's soccer game that night, I had numerous things on my mind. Several things I was anxious about, several things... I was concerned about at least one thing that was bringing me profound grief. But when Bennett drew my attention to the beauty of that moon, and when I saw the joyful glow on his face as he did, and as I saw his hopeful expectation of what my response to him might be, And as I thought about how I'd been just about to drive by this manifestation of God's goodness without even taking note of it, I had my awareness suddenly amplified. And thus, in that moment, while my anxieties and my concerns and my griefs were not magically removed and not by a long shot, nonetheless, I was made in that moment momentarily well. Which is to say, I was suddenly aware of how good to the core this world really is. How good to the core this life really is. Of how abundantly blessed I am to spend a small number of years getting to take it all in. and Learn from it. And be affected by it. And hopefully give something back to it. Now, my concerns and troubles were not minimized that day. But they were contextualized. And that distinction makes all the difference. Dear family, as image-bearing creatures of God, it is the gratitude. It is the humility. It is the wonder. It is the awe. It is the appreciation that makes us Well, it is the capacity to see and to give thanks for God's never-ending gifts, for the eternal goodness that saturates creation. Circumstances ebb and flow. Fortune comes and goes. The rain falls on the just and the unjust alike. But the world-sustaining goodness of the Lord lasts forever. 
and it is on daily display, and it is humble gratitude that opens our eyes to it. Were not ten made clean? Jesus asked that day. Yes, ten were. But only one was made well. Let those with ears to hear, hear. Better yet, let those with eyes to see, see. And all God's people said, Amen. And I'll be down front now to receive any who might this day want to orient their lives around the risen Jesus, following Him as Lord and as Savior. Any who might want to recommit themselves to His way. Any who might want to formally join our membership here at Boulevard or anyone who simply wants to pray with me about any manner of things on your heart.